The Yak Tiger is not as good as you might think and I'll explain why in this video. But first 200 likes within 24 hours means a new video within 2 days so be sure to leave a like. The SD KFZ 186 is a German armored fighting vehicle used in the Second World War. It is the heaviest armored vehicle which actually saw service in the Second World War. And it also had the 128mm main armament on it. This must mean it is the most powerful armored fighting vehicle, right? Right? Not exactly, but let's first walk through the characteristics of the Yak Tiger before I'll explain you why this is not the case. The Yak Tiger was originally conceived as a self-propelled gun. The range of fire of the Yak Tiger's 128mm main armament could classify the vehicle as a self-propelled gun and this caused confusion over the name and its role. This resulted in an argument within the German military over who controlled them. If the vehicle was designated as a Sturmgeschütz, it would belong to the artillery, but if it was designated as a Panzerjäger, it would belong to the tank destroyers. On the 13th of July 1944, the squabble over the name was seemingly put to rest by Heinz Guderian when he listed the Virgo as a Panzerjäger. As far back as spring 1942, the German army general staff were requesting a 128mm gun mounted on a self-propelled chassis as a heavy assault gun capable of supporting the infantry against armor targets, and so the idea of the Jagd Tiger was born. By the end of March 1943, the chassis destined for the 128mm gun was going to be either from the Panther or the Tiger II. A mock-up was prepared of the Panther hull, but it was quickly discarded as being unsuitable. They first wanted to keep the weight limit at 70 tons or less. And even though they did stay under the weight limit, after adding on extra combat equipment like the crew, ammunition, etc., it ended up weighing over 75 tons, and the armor was the main reason for this. For example, the castmate was 250mm thick, as you can see on this image, 150mm on the glazes and 100mm on the lower plate. And speaking about ammunition, the Yak Tiger could carry between the 38 and the 40 rounds of ammunition, and this is how the ammunition looked like. I actually saw one source claim that it was about 50 kilograms heavy, which would also most likely mean that it impacted the reload speed on the Svegel. So as you can imagine, the 128mm L55 Buck 80 gun was certainly very impressive. So this was certainly one of the most powerful main armaments used in the Second World War on a tank. For example, the Panzergranate 39, commonly used by Germany during the Second World War, basically at point blank range had a penetration power of 228mm on a 30 degree angled armor. So according to my calculations, it would have a 456mm of maximum effective penetration power at a distance of 100m. In other words, it could penetrate the Tiger 1 frontally over 4 times. But then you start to wonder. But learning history together, this all sounds good. I mean, 250mm is hard to penetrate. And the main armament can knock out any armored fighting figure of the period, and yes, this was the case. It is very unlikely that an Allied tank at the time could actually frontally pose a significant threat to the Yak Tiger. However, there are more things that make a tank or armored fighting figure great. For example, mobility. The top speed of the Yak Tiger was just over 34 km an hour on the road, but keep in mind they could never run at full top speed, so this would most likely be significantly lower. And off road it gets atrocious. The maximum top speed off road is only 14 km an hour. The Yak Tiger had the same engine fitted as the Panther and the Tigers. It had about 690 horsepower in there. The engine was named the Maybach HL 230. Another downside of this armored fighting vehicle is its profile. It was 10.6 meters long, 3.6 meters wide and almost 3 meters tall. This would make concealing it very difficult. And like the saying goes, not being spotted is the best armor. It also makes you very easy to hit, if it's from other tanks or if it's from other planes. The massive structure did to allow 6 crew members to fit in there and these were the commander, 1 driver, 2 loaders, 1 gunner and 1 radio operator. Now we go to everyone's favorite part, service history. The first user of the Yak Tiger was supposed to be the third company Panzerjäger Training Abteilung 130, which was scheduled to receive 14 of these vehicles in March 1944. However, due to delays in production, that plan did not materialize, and instead the first user became the Schwerer Panzerjäger Abteilung 653rd. By the end of November 1944, this unit received 16 Yak Tigers. 
The 653rd took 14 Jack Tigers to the Western Front in December 1944 for the planned offensive in the Ardennes. But due to Allied bombing raids, only six made it to the front and eventually none actually took part in the offensive. Eventually they were withdrawn to take part in Operation Northwind, where three Jagdtigers took part under the command of Commander Major Fromme and Gottsvorm Bear Liegingen. This unit saw sporadic action against the American forces in southern Germany, but the successes were minor and just after a few days this unit was also disbanded. Two Jagdtigers of the 653rd took part in combat near an enemy bunker line. They were used as fire support for an infantry attack. The next day, they were in action again against the American forces, and the German report on the action shows that their accuracy at 1000 meter against the enemy bunkers was excellent. And after only two shots, the armored cupola of the bunker started burning. When the Americans counterattacked with tanks, one German was hit and knocked out by a high explosive shell. In total, these two Yak tires fired 56 shells, 46 of which were high explosive and 10 were anti-tank. And they suffered no losses to enemy fire. The unit did to lose one Jagd target in the spirit though, it was later captured by the US forces after having been abandoned in working order. The 653rd surrendered to the Allied forces near Amstetten where the Soviet and American forces had met. One Jagd target surrendered here and was subsequently taken back to the Soviet Union and remains in the collection of Kubinka. The other user of the Jagd target was the 512. 42 Jagd targets were destined for this unit consisting of 10 for the each of three companies. One of each for the company commanders, one of each for the platoon commanders. And this was expected to be fully operational by the beginning of March 1945. There isn't a lot of information about the first company or at least not that I could find, but it is stated that the Jagd targets did to see combat and four of them were lost, three of which due to mechanical breakdowns. It is also said that they were constantly worrying about Allied bombing raids, although the first company was also credited with the destruction of 16 enemy tanks. The second company did to see some action with the Yak Tigers on the 11th of April. They were involved in the defense of UNA against the 1st and 9th US armies advancing. The five Yak Tigers of this unit stood no chance of halting the American advance. The second company was a strength of seven Yak Tigers by the time of its surrender on the 15th of April. Nine Jagd Tigers of the 512 remained in Austria though and were put to use by the 6th SS Panzer Army. On the 9th of May 1945 they engaged the Soviet tank forces and destroyed several enemy tanks before they were abandoned. My opinion. This is just my opinion, feel free to debate me in the comments. I will try to give my opinion with the facts I've stated before and also the facts I've used in other videos. The issues with AVs like this is that they first haven't been in a lot of combat throughout the war and they haven't been mass produced. So basically we have to go by how potentially good they were at one point. Like I suggested before, it had a very powerful gun and very good armor. Its theoretical penetration was good enough to knock out any tank and to be fair so did the 88mm but you can argue that the 88mm soon will be outclassed by the new heavy tanks and assault weapons countries like the USSR and the United States were developing. Of course, looking back on it, it wasn't such a big deal as they actually thought it would be, but the concern was well placed in my eyes. But this is one of the only things I can really say positive about it. For one, it got the overstretched components from the Tiger and they added 10 tons more. The overall readiness was horrible, for example on the 22nd of May the overall readiness of these vehicles was only 6%. Another issue is that it was massive. The bigger the vehicle, the easier it is to spot and hit. Another issue is that it didn't have a turret. Uh, there's also an issue with the Yak Panther where the tracks were oddly very easy to hit. So comparing the two, it wouldn't be that far fetched if the Yak Tiger would suffer from that same issue. And another thing that was that for one Yak Tiger, there could have been two Panzer Force made. So what I'm trying to say is it was also overly expensive. Anyway, that was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you stayed this long, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It would mean a lot. And again, 200 likes within 24 hours means a new video in 48 hours. I uh, got a video on the left, playlist on the right. So if you want to see more, click on that and have a very good day.